So what I've done is I've taken from Yahoo Finance uh, option chain data and truncated away the less uh, liquid contracts based on bid offer spread, based on uh, volume traded open interest. Um, I might also just go back to the initial contract and put in these headings which could be useful uh, later. So we enter the head so enter the headings um, and and paste. So we have the contract name, the last price that the option trades, typically the day before, the bid price, the ask price, change, percentage change, the volume, open interest and implied volatility. Okay, so let's copy all of that again. And go into a new spreadsheet and so copy new spreadsheet and paste special values okay so we have the contract name and the strike I've removed uh, the hyperlinks uh, with the last bid ask change change so uh, okay I want to set out then um, I want to use the Dumas Fleming Whaley model and I want to ask this type of model. Uh, in other words, um, I'd like to parameterize a relationship between the implied volatilities associated with options and their exercise, exercise squared, and uh, also have a look at this. Well, in particular, we're going to have a look at this particular relationship where we identify, estimate implied volatility as a dependent variable in a regression and we parameterize a0, a subscript 1, a subscript 2, etc. where x denotes the exercise, x2, exercise squared, t, the maturity contract, t2, or t squared, the maturity squared, and then the product of exercise and the maturity. Okay, so this relationship is one that I'm uh, in, interested in. Um, now we have the raw data in, essentially um, and we could um, just uh, pull that apart so okay first of all we want to uh, calculate the implied volatility for each of these option positions so I'm going to copy this data again copy and paste and I'm taking out the contract name the lease um, I can remove the last delete um, I want the time period so that's going to be important um, and the volume open interest these I want to remove so let's delete these and I want to estimate the time period to maturity in days. Okay, so insert and time in days. Time to maturity in days. So, so what I might do is put in a start date and then end date. Um, so let's um, make a little bit of space here. Insert. And by the start date, I mean what is the, the date that we extracted this data from Yahoo Finance. So it was the 30th of October 2015. And because we're in Europe, because I'm based in Europe, this is the, this is how the sh spreadsheet reads the data. And, or it was the 23rd, the start date, the 23rd is the was the date I took the data from Yahoo Finance and the expiration is the 30th of October so 30 10 2015 how many days is that it's equal to the end date minus the date when I got the data 
so seven days and that would seem to make, make sense so I'll put in start date and I'll put in maturity date maturity or expiration and I express the difference in terms of days and we can pull that down all the way and I can take that date again and paste and pull it down and the expiry here is the 18th of the 12th of December 2015 and the number of days between just subtract 1 minus sorry uh, the expiration minus the start date and that's 56 days and we can pull both of these down and we can go again we have oops I made a mistake so it's the 23rd and this is the 23rd as well and we just pull this down and it should be the 23rd the very last uh, here also let's take these two copy 23rd of October paste and the 19th of February so the 19th of the 2nd 2016 and again here I have to make a change so it's also the 18th touch okay and it's 56 days each time okay and likewise this would be the same again copy paste and the difference between the two is equal to 19th and take away the start date so 119 days and again it should be 119 days and we can pull this down and the next contract is April 15th so we take these values copy paste and we pull down and then and I'll fill the rest of the page up I'll just pause here okay so I have in effect I have the bid ask change um, this I probably don't need so I'm going to delete the start date expiry and time to maturity and so um, the probably should write strike and we don't need these two columns but just to say what they are the start date is the date when the data was extracted from the Yahoo Finance and the expiration was the expiration of the contract and we can see if we subtract the difference seven days the 18th of the 12th 18th of December from the 23rd of October to the 18th of December that's 56 days and using the same Excel trick uh, that between the 23rd of, the, of October 2015 and the 19th of February 2016 the number of days is 119, 175, and 238 respectively. Okay, uh, we could copy and paste paste special values again, and we could eliminate these two days to lease, and we could take out the contracts and we could um, delete 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 just to make the data points contiguous okay and we might insert in okay so insert what the uh, stock price was for Apple and if we go back to the initial uh, okay the stock price uh, on the 23rd of October um, was that figure so we could paste so 19 and paste again and just take these and pull down
Okay, now what we need to do is to estimate implied volatility and um, to make that estimate we can consider the following. We can go into a, a spreadsheet, go to playlists, look for implied volatility. Uh, the second file here and look for this link and I'll wait and we could take well let's just download this file so this is the file for estimating implied volatility and has it opened I think it has enable editing enable content Developer, Visual Basic, Editor will copy the function. Let's take that again. Copy. And I'll open Dumas Fleming Rayleigh. There is no module there. Let's insert a module. It's empty. Paste. Go back into the spreadsheet for Dumas Fleming Rayleigh. So let's see this file here. That's the file. Let's so let's say file file save as Dumas Fleming Whaley and we'll change the file extension to macro enabled now that we've added in um, the implied volatility function. So we'll save. Then we go into back into the developer tab and we copy the function name. Copy. And just go back into the spreadsheet. Let's put this here. Paste. Consider again our data set. Uh, so we might. Uh, consider looking at um, four time periods one let's segment this so we have this time period we have the following time period we have uh, up to 119 days and the 238 days okay now we could take out this time frame uh, so because of the the number of days is so short uh, we can put in then the let's implement the formula so paste again uh, equal we can do stock price. Let's take this stock price 119. Uh, exercise 90. The risk free rate, it's virtually zero, but we could go zero, uh, zero to five, uh, point two five percent. Dividend yield. Let's have a look at Yahoo. The dividend yield on Apple is one. 0.876 so we'll just use that as a proxy so let's say we expect that the dividend yield in the coming year is 1.876 percent the time period here is 56 days as a proportion of year we divide by 365 and the call market price is equal to the average of the bid and the ask so open bracket bid plus ask divided by two close off the bracket and we get 41 percent let's pull it down all the way and we get the implied volatilities for each of the for the time periods and we can see a little bit of skewing on that and Probably 
may may excuse Morsud and a smile.